All right, you didn't believe me. You thought I was just joking. You thought I was just putting you on. But this is now the story that you should walk away from if you like animals, if you love animals, and especially if you don't eat meat or any kind of animals. If you're vegan, please run away. They might not die. I, I, you ever heard of Mike the Headless Chicken? No. no. Mike, Mike the Headless Chicken. Miracle Mike. Mike. Good old Mike. Well, first miracle of all, Mike, they if call it's going it. to be a miracle, can't they give a better name than just Mike? Well, but, uh, no one really knows where he got the name, but uh, Mike the Headless Chicken. So uh, this story starts in Fruta, Colorado. I think I'm pronouncing that right. It's the word fruit with an A on the end. Fruta, 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 Colorado. Fruta, Fruta. There's a small farming community in the Grand Valley in the central northwest of the state of Colorado. So September 10th, 1945. It's a Monday evening at the home of Lloyd and Clara Olson. Um, Clara had planned to serve chicken in the evening as the family meal. Oh, I don't like this already. (laughs) <laughs> and so she bid her husband to go out and to dispose of one of theirs so that she could start the supper. Um, See, this is what you were supposed to do. This is what you I, had to I, do. I, right. I, well, now that I know well, that, you know, it. okay, well, man, daddy, you don't think that I feel an infinite shame now not knowing that? I just feel better knowing you know you feel the infinite shame. I, the, don't make me feel better. Well, he selected a <laughs> five. And a half, so he selected a five and a half month old, two and a half pound. Wyan Dote Chicken Mike. Mouth is watering. He named yeah. it Mike before it was dinner? No, I think <laughs> <laughs> Which one have for dinner? Larry, Mike, creepy. or Cindy? That's well, serious. that was my first sort of question about the story is like, what's, the like, how can it be later, more strange was, than a chicken with a name? I'll, I'll let you know when the name okay. comes into play, but nobody really knows where the name came okay. from. All right, all right. So an unnamed chicken was selected for dinner. <laughs> yes. Chicken number 13 <laughs> okay. was selected for dinner. Uh, so unknown chicken. Lloyd was known like the unknown comic. Where's the paper bag on his head? Um, so now Lloyd was aware that his wife's mother would be dining with them that evening, and knowing that she was particularly fond of the neck, he made sure to angle his axe to leave an ample portion for her. Um, now that's a guy who knows his wife, right? That's a guy who's like, you know, my wife's really gonna dig chewing on this neck. Well, he was quoted as saying, <laughs> it, was in, "It was as important to suck up to your mother-in-law in the '40s as it is today." Um, okay, where's the little guy? I thought it was his wife. I'm no, it's sorry. his mother in law. Okay. Uh, so also, never go to bed angry. Never. That's good advice. Good I advice. only go to bed angry. But I'm just re- glad you don't wake up angry and tweet. Oh, I still do. <laughs> the routine of killing chickens was nothing new to Olson. Um, having a farm and having to perform sometimes as many as 40 kills a day, he would go down <laughs> to the. Yeah. Well, no, he would. He would. This, this is a chicken farm, so they well, sold he, chickens. They had people. multiple things. Yes, he would sell the carcasses of chickens okay. to the local meat market. All right, so this is a man who knew his... He was the Vlad the Impaler of chickens. chickens. He, knew, he knew his chicken death. Right. He All knew right. his chicken death. Open those guys in Tampa, by the way. Chicken, chicken death? death? So yeah, good guys. The, uh, the expression running around like a chicken with your head cut off is... Right. is for a reason. Uh, it is actually a somewhat a common occurrence. Normally, with the decapitation of uh, the head... The brain is separated from the torso, and briefly, the spinal cord nerves and circuitry retain a bit of residual oxygen left in the body. So, this is where the running comes in. The neurons begin to fire simultaneously without communication from the brain, and the involuntary reflexes kick in, and the actions initiate. But sometimes, this could happen while the the chicken's laying on the ground after its head's been separated, but occasionally they get up and run around, but no longer than 15 minutes at most. 15 minutes? Still 15 minutes is creepy. That's, that's, that's imagine, a, imagine a person doing that. That's, that's insane. Imagine 15 normal. minutes of a headless person just running around your yard. God, that's terrifying. <laughs> oh, it is when you see it live. It's creepy. Ugh. But in the case <laughs> of Mike the chicken, uh, this was not so. Lloyd Olson's sensitivity to his dear mother-in-law's palate uh, oh. made him strike a little high on the neck. Uh, so basically, the hatchet came down that merely the beak, face, eyes, and one of the ears were severed from the rest of the body. The blow missed the jugular vein entirely, and only due to a blood clot did he not bleed out. Um, The brain stem was left almost entirely intact, as well as um, part part of the back end of the skull. Um, (laughs) He but, just chopped this chicken's <clears throat> face off. Yeah, basically. What he just said. Yeah, like, he de- he if you look him. at a chicken where its neck and its head end is very hard to distinguish. Yeah, it's it's just all face yeah, and hands. I, thought, are I thought this guy was a pro, man. Like this seems like a botched job. Anyway, I'm sorry. Well, okay, so his mother-in-law's at the house. He's a little bit nervous. He's yeah, a little on edge. See. Dr. Tom Smolders, who is an expert in fowl at the Center for Behavior and Evolution at Newcastle University, was quoted as saying, "You'd be amazed how little brain there is in the front of the head of a chicken." <laughs> 
<laughs> or most people I know. <laughs> there you go. I, uh, Count it. So almost 80% of Mike's brain <laughs> <laughs> was left intact, including the medulla, which is in charge of homeostatic functions like heart rate, respiration, blood pressure, etc., uh, enabling it to, through sheer luck, Live and almost function as a normal boor- bird would. Almost uh, function as a bird. Yeah, almost function as a normal bird would. Immediately how, after, how does this work? Yeah. Immediately after his head was removed, um, he was still walking around clumsily, of course blind at this point, and trying to <laughs> clean no himself face. and trying to peck for feed. <laughs> Poor thing. Um, oh my, watching a headless thing try to peck is such a bizarre oh, geez, experiment. <laughs> well, even, what's even worse is that he would try to crow. Oh no! Oh. Yeah. Uh, this came as sort of a gurgling, a gurgling, like bubbling noise. Ah, out of the top oh of the my throat. god! Holy! Ah. This, is, this is genuinely creeping me out. Yeah, now. it's Agreed. like this is like very uncomfortable. Agreed. So when Mike persisted in this not dying, uh, <laughs> Lloyd, <laughs> and then Life. he annoyingly continued to not to die. not die. So Lloyd placed him in an apple box on their front porch, not knowing what to do with him <laughs> for the night. Finish the job, Lloyd. Yeah. Well, he was hoping that the thing would die. He was. He felt just run around and die. So he could have just you taken take, it out. Right, you take one whack with the axe, and then you're like, nah, it didn't work. I guess it's meant to live. Like, do break its neck or something. Finishly, you're going to let this thing... Whatever, I'm sorry, go It's ahead. a little weird, but he... <laughs> well, he felt bad about it, and he kind yes, of he was curious about it, so he decided to encourage this second lease on life for this rooster. Uh, and he began to devise a method, a method of feeding him. Um, he used an eyedropper with a mixture of milk and water... And alternately, small corns of grain to feed Mike through his esophagus, directly into his esophagus. Dropping uh, it right in there. He noted that mucus would also build up occasionally in the bird's throat, yeah. and he would have to use a syringe to remove it to clear it out so he could breathe, breathe properly. So uh, he was, he, he's doing his due feel, diligence. Yeah, did he feel badly or any kind of remorse? He was, he was, he was, he was pretty much nursing it back now. to life. He right. was very impressed, and he was like, this thing's going to live, I'm going to help it live. Oh, I thought you said depressed. Or mit- no, I'm not depressed. depressed. Uh, and I can attest to that fact because um, Troy Waters, uh, Olson's great grandson, recounts that stories that Lloyd would tell him when he was a child that uh, he apparently took the bird into town with him on the regular, and he would often, you know, go there for the to sell carcasses to the meat market, uh, and he used to go to the bars and bet people. That he had a headless live chicken out in his truck. As you would. Why he, wouldn't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's so I would more, totally do safest that. Safest money in the, the world. The more he won, more people <laughs> talked about it. And eventually, uh, word got to a local newspaper. And the story was picked up and interviewed Olsen about the whole thing. And shortly thereafter, about two weeks after, he was contacted by a sideshow promoter by the name of Hope Wade. Who tried to persuade him to make a little profit with the bird. I mean, a, a dude named Hope? A dude named Hope. I think that's the next Star Wars movie. A, <laughs> a dude, dude named, named Hope. Hope. And so Olsen, he ultimately hit the road with the Miracle Mike, as he was then dubbed by Hope Wade, um, on the Sideshow Tour. And people would pay two bits a piece to get into the tent. Two yeah, that's bi- a good price two for seeing a headless being chicken. Being a quarter. Um, and Mike, at this point... Um, was still very healthy, and he even grew. Uh, it's said <laughs> in the 18 months that he survived without his head. 18 months without a head. 18 months. Uh, he went from two and a half pounds to eight pounds. Oh, God. So he he was like, thrived! Oh, yes. He was obese. He was feeding him too much to try to keep him alive. Right. And then he died of obesity. Pretty much bra- <laughs> like 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 rearing this this rooster. It's a rooster, rooster? Right? Yeah. 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 Rearing this thing to be like a broiler <laughs> hen. I, I can't. It's like I'm not a hen, no, though. Actually, it's almost getting to the point. Where it's going to be a stew hen if there's too big. You have to. You know, yeah. that meat's going to be a little stringy. I mean, it's not even like you can consider it like free money. Like he just happened upon this. The guy had to tend to okay. this mutilated, horrifying little like zombie chicken for 18 months and just like but with the knowledge that it was him that did it the whole time. Like looking at him, like. I'm sorry, Mike. Like you gave him a name, and like you're hanging out with him, and you're like, "I did this to you, he man." Like I'm sorry. Hey, but yeah, here's bird. the thing. But if, if it's walking around, if it's gaining weight, what else does a chicken do? You know, it wasn't see? like he lost his love for poetry. No, it's a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Chickens see, like they can, like all right. Also, well, not he, blind chickens. Olson even was quoted as saying that quote. Take that, Kaz. That, Thank you. That Mike was a quote. Robust chicken, a fine specimen of a chicken, except for not having a head. 
Dan Cook. Oh, hell. <laughs> That little minor minor detail. Whose fault is that, asshole? But they toured the entire country. They did a U.S. tour. They, and you uh, know what? Not many chickens would have gotten that opportunity. So even though he didn't get to appreciate it visually, maybe <laughs> there, he sensed it in some way. It's yeah. not a college graduate, okay? It's not like uh, it's touring the countryside. He was His photograph was published in dozens of magazines, uh, even in Time and Life magazine. They did oh, on Mike the Chicken. This was a very famous chicken. He was valued <laughs> at $10,000 in 1946 and 1947. He didn't sell? He kept him? And was insured for that much. Yeah, uh, did they eat him after he died, though? Well, okay. Did the, they, so, like, someone, like, someone did a weird Kickstarter to see if stuck. they could buy to eat Mike? So, I, I actually, I feel like if you ate anything headless bef- while it was still, a, you know, if you saw something that was headless and it was alive and then it died, I don't know if I'd want to eat that. No problem. Yeah. Eat his meat, man. Yeah, bring it. Mm. Well, in the spring of 1947... I got a hatchet right here. They were touring Arizona. Put the hatchet down. They were in no. Phoenix. Please uh, put the hatchet down. Well, I'm just, it's, it's a visual aid. Okay. I'm using it. Right. Look, I'm gesticulating. Okay. It. In Phoenix, 1947, spring, Miracle Mike met his long overdue demise, but only due to the slip of a mind. So the very necessary syringe that I talked about previously to clear mucus. mucus out of his throat oh. uh, was this key point. Um, the Olsons woke up in a motel... To the sound of Mike choking, and Lloyd quickly realized that he had accidentally forgotten the syringe at the sideshow. Stupid show, human! And they couldn't find any sort of appropriate instrument to clear his. Just pick him up and suck it out. That's airway. what I was going to say. You got to well, suck it out. You got to go full. You know, you got to go, go full on suck full that on chicken suck thing out, man. It's your prize just, pig. Just act like it's a, like the head of a, a crawdad. Just no. get it right out of there. But he was unable to clear his airway, and Mike suffocated. The story is really getting me in the squeams. <laughs> Yeah, it hit me uh, right between. I didn't the know you had squeams right in the squeams. You didn't seem squeamish. Oh yeah, I got I got squeams for days. Do you think they ate him, or did they give him There's a proper? No, he's got to be barrel. stuffed. Or I right? personally, yeah, oh, yeah. Actually, I, truth truth be told, they probably. Well, you stuffed know what? Him. His grandson actually said that he thought that they probably just threw it in the desert for the coyotes to get. No, really? yeah. oh, come on, oh, yeah. for Mike, what? right? And for for years and years and years, Lloyd would not admit that that was how. Mike died. Uh, only in his infirmity and old age uh, did he confess that that, that was what had happened. It just tortured him his whole life. It was just like, guys, he was like, I, I got to tell, tell, tell I got to tell I let Mike die. <laughs> it was my fault. I got drunk. I woke up and Mike was a choking. I left my syringe at the bar. I'm praying to a chicken, people. Please. I'm on my knees. He just used to tell people that he sold it to some guy, that rich buyer that was, wouldn't, was not let it go and persisted when he was on the side. So he basically circle. did the whole, yeah, uh, we put like, it to, oh, to just, a farm upstate that's him. living a yeah, wonderful yeah. life. It's in chicken heaven. He's <laughs> <laughs> We've had to flush that chicken into in chicken heaven.